Two weeks ago, I, I asked who wants to be poor. And until now, nobody raised their hands. Tonight, uh, we'll be talking about uh, prosperity. But first of all, I have to, uh, to call your attention about something. Because Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 5.13, Matthew 5.13, in his message, uh, we see, Blessed are those the poor in spirit, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to heaven if you are not uh, poor in your spirit. Who wants to be poor and who wants to go to heaven so you see our dilemma we're going to talk about prosperity and God speaks more about prosperity than in heaven because God understands that in our human state the money can take us uh, uh, the way that we deal with money can uh, um, end up taking us to hell or um, open, a, uh, open a, the place for Jesus in our lives to go to heaven. And that's why he speaks a lot about money in the church, because uh, uh, these are the two most powerful things in the world. And he talks about this because it's a problem, in a way or in another way. And uh, we're going to talk about this, but first, we're going to talk about the context of, of God in this this thing about prosperity. Otherwise, we're gonna uh, uh, we're gonna uh, uh, do the same as some churches they do, like uh, using heresies and uh, promising things for the people that God doesn't promise. Uh, you know, uh, teaching things that God never taught. We're gonna talk first about this uh, poor in the spirit. Actually, the being poor in the spirit, it's it's being ne um, to 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 be empty empty of yourself. You know the big the biggest problem of the human being not going to Jesus. Uh, it's a uh, 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 too much self love. Jesus said, "I came for the the the, the sick and not for those who are who are fine." While the person um, doesn't understand his his need for a salvation, while he doesn't understand that his his uh, drawing end is gonna die, and there is no other way, he's not a good candidate for salvation in Jesus Christ. It's like it's how I ask you: How many of you have been in in, in the sea or in the river or in a pool, or you almost draw, you almost drowned, you almost drowned. What a what an awful thing! It's a terrible thing. And then someone uh, threw uh, threw something towards you to save you, or, 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 or something, and and then you, you you grab it. So did you complain about it, or even if they throw just a a, a little piece of a stick, uh, you would try to grab it. But if you are you're good at just swimming and, and you're okay, and you throw some something, it's a uh, gotta be upset. Like, are, are, are you are you insane? Because you're saying that uh, he can't swim. In the same way, like pouring is being poured in the spirit. It's it's a uh, the 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 basis to go to heaven. Without being poor in the spirit, without understanding your your sinful nature. Uh, you can't have your salvation in Christ. And when you think that you can offer something to, to get your salvation, this is a salvation uh, uh, based on deeds, and God doesn't save anyone like this. And Ephesians uh, 6, 8, 9, he says that nobody gets to heaven by their deeds or, or, or good things or 
or, or his goodness as well as nobody is going to heaven by keeping the law nobody 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 is going to heaven by keeping the law why does he say this you you can only have the salvation in Jesus Christ when you understand that you need him you, you, you call him out he says I need you I need this salvation in Jesus Christ in my life and God always and he promises that he always will give the salvation and the eternal life and uh, forgiveness for your sins and he makes you son and he gives you eternal life and first and and inside of the the God uh, uh, God part um, parent in the God's uh, you have to be poor in the spirit you get your the link with the honor of every richness of every wealthy you don't you don't get to be like uh, one of those uh, those uh, uh, um, gold explorers they just uh, stay by the shore by the shore with those uh, bowls like a Chinese hats like uh, shaking it around and looking for some uh, pieces of shiny things and he stays like for days doing things like this the, the big companies the big the, the 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 big companies they know that that is a sign of something bigger and they go deeper to find it and um, it's like when someone when when some people actually look for this this small things God is saying that you have to understand uh, what is deeper inside the, the Lord of Eternity that we sing in this last song. And we're going to talk about prosperity, and I'm getting there. And don't, don't forget it. I'll tell you, in this message, it's going to be about three weeks. I know that because I already preached this three times today. It's not going to be two, it's going to be three. And tonight we're going to start at the uh, conditions that God requires to prosper, to prosper you. But before we start speaking about this, we have to talk about what is actually richness. What is richness to God? Because the, the men, they explain richness as a, just a slice of what God considers uh, richness. Because let me ask you a question. Uh, what matters if you are like rich, uh, richer than God, but uh, you don't have healthy? What does it matter if you have like a lot of money and you don't have emotional health? Um, what does that matter if you have like a lot of money? And everybody hates you, hates you, and calls you a thief. This is a thief, it's a, it's a corrupt. Uh, what, is, what does it matter? What does it matter if you have a lot of money, but you don't have peace inside of you? Even in Sao Paulo, like when people have a lot of money there, but they don't have peace, even a little bit of yours, but they don't sleep well at night. They're afraid of that. At night, when they wake up, the federal, the, the federal, federals come to their houses and uh, arrest them. What does it matter? Does that matter if you have money and have nobody that likes you? What matters? What really matters, actually? Actually, Jesus says that uh, um, uh, what profit do you have if you make like the the a lot of money and you go to heaven uh, you go to hell I'm sorry we're gonna stay here in this earth for about uh, 60 years old with money but afterwards you have to give it account and he talks about a, a, a bigger richness uh, ab abundant richness which the money 
It's just a slice of it. I like money, do you? I don't love money, because the love of money is the root of every evil. So we can't love money, but I like it. For example, I got here, like, I got this, this, this pink one. Do you like this pink one? Do you like the pink one? This other pink one? It's actually blue. If you don't like the pink one, you can give it to me. Many people said no. If you don't, you pass it to me. I, I like it. Because 10 of it gives me a blue. But if I got to choose, I like the yellow the most than I like the, 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 the pink one. And I like it even more, the, the brown one, than the yellow one. But my favorite one is the blue one. This, which we consider richness in the world, it's actually a, just a slice of the, the God's richness. The God's richness is a richness that uh, uh, makes you feel good. The God's richness includes like a lot of things that he teaches us, for example, Proverbs chapter 22, 1, 22, 1. It says that a good name uh, is better than great richness, riches. Uh, what profit do you have if you have like a lot of money and everybody calls you a thief and a... And a and uh, a corrupt person and, and stuff. Proverbs 15, 17. 15, 17. Says that being loved is better than having money. It's a way worthier than money. How many married women do we have here? Do we have married women here? And I ask you a question. Would you rather uh, be married with, uh, with uh, 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 a super rich man, but uh, make you feel down, put you down, but not a very rich man, man, but he's it's, 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 it's in love for you, he's passionate for you. What would you rather, the rich? Come on. I'm just kidding. Everybody will. Everybody's like, I I'm just kidding. Nobody said that. I, I, I made it up. I made that up. The love is worthier than, way worthier. I've talked to with a person this week that. Uh, he has, like, uh, all the money she need, he needs actually is a woman. She, so she's getting uh, uh, crazy because her husband doesn't love her. Her, her. her husband has, like, plenty of women. He puts her down. And she's under depression. God, when he talks about money, he talks about uh, emotional health and not being in depression and, uh, and uh, sickness. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, sadness. When he talks about uh, uh, prosperity, he talks about living well with your family, with your children, uh, uh, parents around the table, and uh, Psalm uh, uh, 128, peace with your wife, with your family. And God, when He talks about richness, He talks about uh, joy. You have joy in your life. It's a, it's a rich, uh, richness that money doesn't buy. We have many people that are rich, but they uh, have no joy. And that's why every day they use cocaine and other kind of drugs to try to generate this dopamine, which is the chemistry of um, joy. To try to... Uh, uh, to fill this 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 gap so the God's definition of, of, of prosperity and richness is uh, being healthy the the definition of of richness 
It's you being used for the purpose that God has, has made you to do. And you feel yourself and the purpose that He was created you for. You know, this is a richness to, to get to where He wants you to be. To do what He wants you to do. This is richness. This gives you like a self-esteem, amazing self-esteem. Uh, the, 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 def the God's definition of richness is having a family that loves you and a, a, a physical family or a spiritual family that, that they would give a, a, a part of their bodies for you. The God's definition of, of prosperity and richness is it's, um, being satisfied with what, what, you, what you have. God wants you to be satisfied with, with what you have. There are many really, really rich, rich people. There are many people that if they spend like a million dollars at a day, they would not be able to spend all their money. But they're not happy. They, they, they are, are not uh, um, in, in, the, in the God's definition, being satisfied, it's the, it's the actually the richness. First, Timothy. Uh, in fact, uh, godness, godness, being satisfied, is a great uh, found of profit. If you're not satisfied with your ministry, with your 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 religious thing with uh, your your church with your spiritual part if you're not you're not uh, satisfied with this it's uh, uh, you're poor no there's a generation that is coming it's a movement it's a uh, 25 to 35 years they are the the church the church they are discouraged with the churches and they are People that are, they know Jesus, but they they are sick and tired of the church. I recently met a man, met a man in the city that he told me that that the problem is that you're in the wrong church. If you're a church, it's a church that only wants your money, only wants to 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 get things from people. Maybe you're there for wrong motives. Maybe you're there because you thought that you would make money there. Actually, maybe your motivations was good, but there, there are good churches. Revelation says that the, 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 you have to, to, to look for a church. One of the marks of a good church is, is a, a church that loves, that, a church that puts God in first place, uh, a church that they, they don't take advantage of people. There are those churches. This is richness, and God uh, tells us that the, the, def the God's definition of richness is you have enough to live well, to live well. The God's definition of, of richness is that it's uh, having a lot of wisdom and uh, discernment in your decisions, being able to make good decisions. The God's definition of a richness is you having a uh, eternal life. And then you found the, the, the core of the thing. God wants you to have eternal life. If you don't have eternal life, you don't understand what is having richness yet. So, uh, uh, um, The book of Second Chronicles, chapter one, verse eleven. Solomon was made as a king, and in a night, Solomon said, "Ask me whatever you want, in honor of your father. You can ask me whatever you want, and I will give to you." Solomon would ask money or or the death of his enemies. 
he could uh, be asked whatever. What did he ask? Wisdom and discernment. Wisdom to to lead the God's people in the, the, the good paths. And God said, because you asked me wisdom, I can also give you richness and victory over your enemies. I can give you other kinds, but with wisdom you can uh, you can manage those things. Without wisdom, you can't manage even your money. And the God's definition of a um, of these conditions that God uh, 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 com demands for prosperity. We have to understand that when God speaks about prosperity, richness, he, He's speaking about the the whole thing. He's not talking about this this piece of paper here that the 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 when he was released you would it is well fifty dollars but today is like twenty dollars less than twenty even less than twenty dollars actually in the very beginning actually this one was a hundred dollars but today is like twenty so based on this definition that it's a way more than money money is just a slice of it we would like to talk about eight conditions that the Bible tells us that uh, are essentials essentials for you to prosper eight conditions Bible conditions for prosperity First, the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 4, one that we read a few days ago. The sluggard desires but doesn't get anything, but the diligent. The diligent get what he wants. You have to be diligent and work hard. Diligent and work hard. Being diligent and work hard. What is being diligent? Diligent means that you have to work doing the the the, 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 the best with the best of your, your capacity. It's not perfectionism that people... Uh, uh, um, this is a, a, a sickness. You have to see a psychologist, a shrink. This is a problem, but... Uh, it's doing things with the, the maximal of your capacity. Doing good, do well done things with careful and bend, with uh, persistence. A hard work in, in Proverbs 14, 14, verse 23, it says, All toil there's profit in all toil there's profit but mere but mere talk tends only to poverty every toil brings profit and God is telling here that uh, one of the conditions of you to prosper you have to work hard you have to work a lot and then you have to be diligent you, you got to do well your work the one who works diligently will serve kings you're gonna go up in your in your rates. It's important of you to do this constantly. There are people that start to show production and they, they show their work, but they don't uh, persevere. This is lack of uh, diligence. In Hebrews chapter six, Hebrews chapter six, verse ten until eleven. I'm, I'm sorry, until twelve. Hebrews 6, verse 6 to 12. God is not unjust. He won't forget about the, your work, your toil. He's not going to forget your work if you did for him. In, in, in your work in every part of your life, in your job, in your family, in your church, God will not forget. God is not unjust. He won't forget of your work. 
this, this hard work of raising your children in a tough world that we live right now. But God says he's not going to forget you. You're going to prosper. He will not uh, uh, forget of your work and the love that you showed for him. While work hardly, your work that you showed for him because you helped the saints and uh, yet you still keep helping them. When you help your brother, the Bible says that you're loving God. It's a, a work in the favor of your brother, but actually it's like Jesus said, everything you do, uh, Paul says this to in the Colossians 3, 23, he says, everything you do, uh, every work you do, do as for the Lord, because He is the one, your boss, your your boss. Everything you do, do as for the Lord. Let's put in, put this in our in our everyday life. You're a plumber. You're gonna do a work, a plumber work in a house. You do as for the Jesus house. That's what He's telling you. Don't be a sluggard. Don't make mistakes. Use the, the correct materials. If you are a mechanic, you fix the car as was the Jesus car. You are... It's your ministry. Do your ministry as was the ministry of Jesus. Jesus' ministry. He is the, the leader of your ministry. Everything you do, and you're going to prosper. This is the, the God's condition. You, you got to do as for the Lord, because at the end, He is the one who sees. I once was building my house, and uh, the, the, the builder that was, was working there, he broke one of the, one of the pipes. The, the shower pipes and he broke it instead of uh, taking out the pipe and fix it he puts like a cement on it and he put the he covered it and when I when I turned the water it was leaking you know what I mean and I found out guess why I will never hide them again. Actually, I'm the worst propaganda of this builder. I'm his, the, the enemy that he didn't want to have. I have another example. Years ago, there's a brother that used to work in the in, 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 a, in a place. I, I can't say the what is the area because you can maybe you can figure it out. But he was at the church. He was a brother of the church. And uh, he fixed things. Man, I put my my equipment in his hands because he was uh, uh, he was diligent. And what I what I what I found uh, clients for him. Man, I, I was his best propaganda. No. Because he was really good what he did. But his eyes... But he got ambitious. And became greedy. And he started to, to cheat. And he's... He, you know, he's stealing pieces from other brothers' houses and put in other people. And sometimes he took part of some uh, equipments and uh, took it to other brother and then he took a, a, a second-handed thing and put it in another place and people found it out people figured it out and the worst thing is that uh, uh, he used to do this among the brothers because he found out that actually the brothers they trust and a half uh, uh, a little bit more than a year he came and said Man, I found a brother that he used to be in the church. I, I think he's not going to church anymore, but he, he really he's really good at what he does. And he asked, do you know him? And I said, yes, I do. And I said, and I was like, 
Well, if I do this, if I would do this for you, it's because I don't want anybody to take me to the court because I did a, a good testimony. But you're insane if you hire a guy like him. A month later, the man called me. Man, he's a he's, he's such a a, a thief. I don't recommend him, not even for my enemy. Know what I'm saying? You know what? Because he stopped doing things for us for Jesus. He stopped doing things with diligence. He let the greedy take him to to cheat, to steal, thinking that he would make more money and this kind of profit has, has a, it's, it's like a lie. Everybody finds it out. And today he lost his family and the company, he lost everything and he lives in poverty. So one of the conditions is to work with diligence, to work hard. And diligent means with with perseverance. Let me see you about a thing that I've been seeing in Manaus. There was a city in the old Manaus, a group of another country, that they had they had a right for being very close to the Brazilians. They had the right to be here in, in the country, and they were owner of uh, pretty much of all the the business in the city and the, the, the downtown. In this culture, they had a, a culture of uh, the goal of the entrepreneurs. They worked really hard in the very beginning, but their goal was to get into a level that they were only the ones who just uh, just observe and uh, sit in the in a couch, and he doesn't. Um, it doesn't work anymore. Like, and there are some brothers here. They are going the same way, and all of them failed. Let me give you an example of five of them. The, lip, the, the bookstores in Manaus. The bookstores in Manaus, they were, they were, used to be part of this, this, this culture owners. In the very beginning, they were there and working and, and going around and, uh, and uh, greet the people, and they do whatever it takes. That's why they grew, but when the prophet came, he wasn't diligent. There was a, a small window. All of them had a small window with a chair. He was just looking if there was a uh, employee stealing something, but they were just observing. They didn't work anymore. If you don't work, you don't know what's what's going on. It's like the the quote, the the cow, the cow only only gets fat when the owner is looking at it. The technology is, is you lose you lose your market if you don't pay carefully attention. All of them. They, they they got they got broken because of this this idea of uh, of wrong thought about lack of diligence. They had quality in the very beginning, but uh, their goal was is to get to a point where you you, you don't work anymore. When you don't work anymore, uh, uh, you die. You have to do the same thing in your ministry. You have to do always well, well done, and then you you're going to prosper. And you have to to know it. A few times ago, I was talking with some pastors. Actually, uh, was uh, uh, somebody that was raised in a in a big church here in Manaus. He was he was raised since he was six years old. Uh, they gave a lot of money to this church. And a few times ago, he wanted to take 15 minutes of meeting with the church. Uh, the pastor has no time for him. Know why? Because the pastor, the pastor, doesn't want to have being touch with the members. When the pastor doesn't want to be and the members, it's time for him to go. To try to find a new 
break because the 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 pastor has to be close to the sheep. The business man has to be where the business are. The 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 owner of the store, they 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 have to be there. Maybe he doesn't do everything alone, but he has to do something. It's like a few a few a few months ago, I was in a. Um, uh, I, I I was I was switching a lot of the guys that used to trim my, my my grass and stuff and take care of my garden, and, and I found a guy, and he said, "Man, uh, uh, Pastor, I need to worry. Can can I can I take care of your garden?" And I told him, "You can do it. You can go ahead this month." And I asked him, "How much do you charge?" And he said, "A hundred." A hundred uh, Brazilian money of the time, actually. You you can go ahead, and I have the, the machete and stuff, and you can break it. And when he was was like uh, 1 p.m., he said, Pastor David, I, I can come tomorrow to finish. And the other day, he came with his assistant. Many of you are doing the same thing because you don't understand what I'm saying. I knew what he brought an assistant because of hard work and he thought, May, I, I will work less and I will command the other. He was supposed to be the boss and said, Hey, you cut here, you cut there. You know what I'm saying? It has something to do with the laziness. Who's that man? Oh, he's uh, a friend of mine. He's going to help me out. Yeah, but I didn't hire him. I don't know him. I don't want, like, unknown people, uh, uh, strange strangers here in my house. That's what I... I don't want, like, people from the energy company and... Uh, they're digging uh, the people's house and they wanted to enter in my house someday. They threatened me. And I said, I, I don't know who, who you are. They were dressed as a, uh, a water company. Um, years ago, they entered in the house of a, a, fr a, a friend of mine and they, they snitched his family. So, he was with his partner there. He's gonna help me. Yeah, but we're we're, we're sort of a uh, doing in turns. And I said, you're you're crazy because you're gonna get like a hundred, a hundred Brazilian bill, Brazilian money at the time, and you're gonna pay at least thirty, and you're gonna get only seventy. Are you that rich? I I take my hat off for you. You're helping other. You're 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 you have a great reward in the heaven. Do you have another work ahead? That's why you wanna hasty things here. No, actually, he wanted to work less. Hard work. It's what brings prosperity. Works work a lot and work well and work persistently, and God will prosper you. This is basic. This is basic. Never dream in a moment where you, you, you don't have to work anymore. You have to dream where you're, you're opening new borders, a manager, an owner of a business. He only can, you know, decrease his rhythm when he, is, he has time to dream in other areas where he can invest. And then you have you gotta have time for this to to res, do researches and to talk to, but only to to be doing nothing. You're gonna be poor. You're not gonna prosper, but your business will get broken. Pay attention to me because there are many br brothers that are open business, but do it right. You gotta follow it. Consider what God recommends you to do. First condition, you have to work diligently and work hard. Second, 
book of Deuteronomy chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 28, when I was a kid, I had problems saying Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. I didn't know how to say it at all. Deuteronomy. 28, verse 1. Deut Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. Condition. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all His commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. I wanted that every government, if you, if you have access to the governments, send this verse to them. Brazil is not over the nations because they're not obeying the God's commandments. Brazil has the ability to be the, 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 the richer country in the world. It's not going to be not until he obeys the Lord. Let's keep going. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall be in in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, as the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your heart, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your knitting bow. Blessed shall be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. And God gives an example of this in the Israel history. Israel was in a, in a bad moment because their kings, they took the people to disobey. They were not faithful to the Lord. And, um, and then a king called uh, is it 2 Chronicles 31. 2 Chronicles 31. The, the king Hezekiah, he decided that he would obey. God's commandments and he, he fought to, to put the people in the right places and restored the temple and the religious work that God had commanded to Israel. And the verse 20 of the verse 30, the chapter 2 Chronicles 31 to 20, does Hezekiah and um, did through all Judah, Judah and he did what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. And every work that he undertook in the service of the house of the Lord in accordance with the law and the commandments, seeking his God, he did with all his heart and prospered. And then he prospered. He, he gave an example of those who did and who did not. So obey the Lord, and God shall bring prosperity in your life, in your business, in your family, in your ministry, in your church. God shall prosper you. This is part of what God works. Condition number three. In Psalm 37, verse 4, Psalm 37, verse 4, if you are looking for a verse to meditate, you can do in this verse. It's uh, amazing. Psalm 37, 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Delight in the Lord. 
Alegra-te, te amarra no Senhor, be, te apaixona pelo Senhor. E tie yourself in the Lord. Get yourself passionate for the Lord. Fall in love for the Lord, and He will give you the desire of your heart. We have to have joy in the Lord. You say, how can I rejoice myself? Rejoice yourself in the Lord. Again, I say, rejoice, or, rejoice yourself. When God gives you an imperative commandment, it's something that you can do. He says, rejoice yourself. Delight yourself. You might say, how can I do it? The Bible says that uh, where is your treasure, there will be your heart. Do you remember when you were in love for this woman that is only seated beside you? Don't raise your hand. She's going to be sad. She felt a, a, a queen as a queen. But you know why you lost the passion? I'm not talking about everybody, just 90%. You know why she doesn't feel a queen anymore, not even a princess? Because you don't rejoice yourself in her. You know why you don't rejoice yourself in her? Because you don't invest on her. When you were afraid of her getting married with another man, man, you would do whatever it takes. You did. She said, oh, I have to go to downtown tomorrow. Man, I'll do it. No, there's no problem. Five, you, you couldn't even sleep at night. 4.30, you was there at her door serving her. I want to go home now. Oh, oh, for sure. You're in the middle of the, the match. You invested your energy, your time, your, your thoughts, your money. I had a friend that he had a uh, minimal wage. He used to, to work. He was not even his girlfriend. He brought a ring. Didn't have money and uh, to pay his transportation, but he loved her. He invested his life. Where is your 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 treasure? There, it's your heart. Who loves the church? This church here. I love this church because I invested everything I have. It's my my my. Uh, my country house is there. There's four apartments that I didn't build. And that wall there, can you see it? My richness are here. As the many other brothers, that's why his church is blessed. Pastors of big churches, they asked me, the Congress that we do once in a year, and they asked how, because uh, it, 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 it's, it's all around. The bigger churches, they knew, they know that in this church, there are people that that say, "How many can you help?" And uh, the people that come, it's 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 more than the spots that we have. And the other pastors, they find this amazing, and they asked me, "How do you how do you do your people work like this?" And I said, "I use the whip." Um, I, mean, I, I didn't tell that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, and I go like, Brother, the people of the church, they love Jesus. They understand that they do for Jesus. They're, they all want to date Jesus. He's the, the, the king of richness. They're all investing. And that's why we don't have uh, uh, complainings. One of other son of the devil, they get in and complain. But the members, they don't complain any, about anything. They complain of not having work to do. It's like the the church, Apostle Paul. They used to 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 beg for 
for being part of this work. You invest your time and you invest your, your thoughts, your, your prayers, your energy. That's why we love this church. And as well as with Jesus, we have to invest in Jesus. Do you remember how many of you uh, uh, already uh, made the One with God course, the discipleship? If you if you don't, you can start tomorrow. Today we had uh, 190 people, almost 200 people, but uh, we can make place for you. Uh, um, do you remember the fourth lesson? How many of you remember the fourth lesson? The consciousness of God's presence, actually. It was originally consciousness of the, the constantly presence of God. God is with you all the time. And there is a lot of uh, exercises. Actually, it's six. It's a uh, good morning, Lord. Do you do it? I do it. And when I see myself forgetting this, I, I get to do this again. Before, if my wife is not awake again, I say, good morning, Lord. If she's not there in the room, I say it a lot louder, good morning, Lord. Good morning, Lord. And then, until today, I have my cell phone. It's a alarm. And then I check how is my day with the Lord every hour. And these things help me help me to turn my thoughts as this ring. I remember that I have a wife that I forgot to call, and this helps me to remember the one that I that I have to be faithful that loves me. And then those exercises, the the beep, the compliments, the good night, and if you are not doing this because you're you're already already adult, actually you are you're decreasing. You are decreasing again because it's in rejoicing the Lord that God will prepare you. God prepares those who rejoice in Him themselves in Him. That's why Paul says, find out what pleases God and do it. Go ahead and do it because Paul's wanted the prosperity of their members, the children of God, and God wants you to be prospered. And for this, you have to have joy in the Lord if you want to be prosperous. Tonight, we looked at three. Don't lose the next Sunday or you will be crippled. Why didn't you have crippled? Because you just had a half of the message. Actually, you need more than a half. But next, next Monday, we'll close these conditions. It's about eight conditions. You're watching me on the internet. Don't lose the next Sunday. You can't lose, you can't lose the next condition. Let's just repeat to finish, to sum it up. Sum it up. Three conditions, the prosperity, Prosperity, that includes the, the money part. What are the conditions? Diligence, diligency and hard work. Number two, obedience to God. And number three, uh, joy in the Lord. I hope you can have a, a great week and you apply those things in your work and your ministry and your family. And whatever you go, apply those things, and you will prosper. Let's pray. Father, Father, thank you for uh, revealing to us the secrets of being prosper and prosper in our lives. May you, uh, Father, please to correct some uh, blurriness in our lives of thinking that Richness is only a money part, and with these words, they can come back to understand the whole thing, and to to keep the the truly richness. Help us to live during this week the, these three principles that you taught us here. 
uh, uh, hard work, obedience, and rejoice in your. That's what we ask you. Remember us when we forget. Help us to live these this principles in our lives so that we can prosper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. Have a good week.